Welcome everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. It is, uh, you know, the most incredible number. It is the 11th of January year 2023. We always uh, focus whenever it is 11-11. So uh, probably a lot of synchronicities, a lot of uh, miracles might have happened today. So Let's move on to the panel and see who we have today. Today, uh, we welcome back Kelly after a long time. Uh, Kelly is a Qigong teacher and as well as uh, she does a lot of soul healing, uh, moved into a different area of healing as well. So thank you so much for joining Kelly. And then we also have Caesar here. Welcome back, Caesar. I know you were not able to make it last week, but we are grateful that you are here. Thank you. And thank you so much, Sri Lakshmi and Dave, for being online. Dave says hello. Okay. So um, I saved a question for Kelly. If he comes in, uh, I did save that one. One of the things that the uh, uh, happened during a group discussion. And I think it would be, I think uh, Eckhart Tolle uh, dedicates chapter nine of A New Earth or chapter, I think it is chapter nine, which is to our inner purpose or our purpose, right? So uh, one of the things that uh, Patricia was talking about is um, she feels like she's here to do something, right? Uh, um, but what is it? How do you discover it? So if you all want to start off with how do you discover what is your path? What is your purpose in life? And then I'll go tag everyone while you're responding, Kelly, if you want to get started. Thank you. All right. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Because I think a lot of times when we think of our life's purpose, we always think of things outside of ourselves. We always think of something else that we want to do that will give our life meaning and purpose. And I, I do feel like one of the biggest purposes that we're here is to learn and to go inside and to be able to feel our true selves. And the more you go inside and feel yourself and you heal yourself, what you're supposed to do externally in the world becomes clear. So it's not, it can be really confusing or not clear. Like, I feel like I have a purpose and your purpose is really to be you. And that sounds very simple, but also can be very complicated when we're going on our journey, because we often want to, uh, we want to be a teacher. We want to do all of these different things. And but also it's really important to always check in all the time, to go inside, to listen to our triggers, to listen to our body, to heal ourselves. Cause we can have a lot to say, but we can also, you know, talk the talk and not walk the walk kind of thing. So I always feel like our life purpose, cause I, I always did the same thing too. Like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose in life? And the more I go inside, the more I just realize for me is that it's to be me. It's to reconnect with who I am to um, one of the things for me personally is to activate my light body and to just really connect with the essence of who I am. Anything that I happen to do externally is, is a bonus because if I'm always focusing on what's outside of me, then I'm not focusing on me. So that's kind of my, my short, long answer. I might have more to say about that after, but kind of where... Where we can start. So what brought you to, let's talk about uh, for a few minutes, um, how, what was your evolution, like path of evolution of, and I'll, I, I can bring up what happened to me the past six years and how yeah. I've evolved. So I kind of want to give, wanted to give Patricia like sure. a path, uh, right? Okay. So how, you know, just because one of the things that may happen is, which happened to me as well in 2011, when I came across Eckhart's teachings, I was like, now I know the spiritual truth. I don't need anything else. And that is my purpose. My purpose is to become like a spiritual guru or it's, it's somebody that just meditates 
you know, you want to retract from life, right? You come to the truth, right. you know, yeah. this is the truth. And you're like, okay, I know the truth. I need to retract from life. And I actually went into a financial loss Mm. Um, because of the fact that I wouldn't go take up another corporate America job because I was like, no, I'm so spiritual that, you know, the ego, we are just like right. in the beginning of our ego, right? Dissolving it. So I was like, uh, I know spiritually what the truth is. So I, I don't need a job. I, I just need to like, uh, like be a teacher or be in presence, right? So that was the incorrect and I realized a year off and then coming to a financial loss, I came to the conclusion that that was not the right decision. We do make wrong decisions, right? That was not the right decision. So I, I want you to speak to that. What was your path? Sure. What was the evolution? Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah, my path, my path personally was when I was a child, I was able to do things that I, other people couldn't. And I didn't always... When I was really young, I didn't understand that not everybody could. When I became a teenager, it was kind of traumatic where I had a couple of near-death experiences, didn't know how to process it, and didn't really have people around me that could help. So I kind of shut down parts of myself because of, the, of that trauma. Then when I was in my 20s and I had another, well, it was a health scare, and I thought that I had cancer, and I was like, it really shook me because I thought, well, I'm not happy. I, I mean, I love part of my job, but it was very stressful. I was married and had a, I was starting to have a family. I had a daughter and I thought, I'm not doing everything that I want in life. And it wasn't even that I was searching for a purpose at that time. It was that I just wasn't happy. And I knew that. And so I needed to go on a journey to discover like, what kind of things are going to make me feel better? What kind of things are going to make me happy? And also to ask myself the really tough questions that why was I not doing any of the things that were going to make me happy? Why was I holding myself back? And I wasn't, um, for example, like I'm an author. So why wasn't I doing that? Why wasn't I writing books the way I wanted to? Why was I not completely happy in my marriage? Like what were the kind of things? So that was sort of the beginning of the journey. And like not long after that, because Eckhart's books have been out for quite a long time. I, I have read both of his books, but it was that was a couple decades ago. But it was also finding other things like like you said, like you'll read a book and some people can go, oh, that's it. I know it. And then that's it. But then you realize, oh, that's not it. There's so much more that you could learn about yourself and just open yourself up to other perspectives, other healing perspectives and it was really became a journey about well what am I afraid of because I was afraid of so many things but I didn't want to feel it so fear and anxiety has been a huge thing for me to reprogram myself from and to go on the journey of trying different things like when I talk to people about all the different things I've done they're like wow that's so cool I don't always think it's cool because I'm the one doing them. I just think it's something that I do. I do it because I enjoy it. And that was a huge thing for me is what kind of things in my life bring me joy? What, what are things that I want to try? And it was being open to trying things. Like when I got published, for example, I all of a sudden was asked if I wanted to try narrating and I became an audiobook, like a voice actor. And that was not anything in my life that I thought I want to be an actor. Like maybe when you're a kid, you think of that. Right. But it's not something that I wanted to pursue or become famous, but it was something that I never thought I would do, but I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a try because I just wanted to try to see if I'd be any good at it. And if I even liked it. Because I knew that if I didn't like it, I don't have to do it anymore. I don't have to keep myself doing something that's not enjoyable. And along the way, even though I tried a lot of different things, the one thing always that was a constant for me is that was my own healing. So if I got triggered or if I um, observed fear that would come up or, and also to make the distinction about when I was making choices from a place of fear, and when I was making choices from a place of love, because it's a weird concept to grab a hold of, but your ego and your heart can want the same things. 
that they both want to feel safe. They both want us to, you know, be able to function in the world. But one is coming from a place of fear and the other is coming from a place of love. So when was I actually, for me personally, I wanted to know when was I acting from a place of fear and could I stop that and then make a different choice? Because then that was acting out of a place of love for myself. So I've done a lot of things like even with Qigong that when I met Kelly, I had actually as an author put on a fundraiser and he showed up there. I had no intention of meeting anyone. Uh, I didn't know how an, an, what an important part of my life he would become. I had no expectations. And that's another thing is to let go of expectations and to sort of enjoy the ride of life because we are here to experience different things. And you can feel a calling. Like there is a lot of things that you can feel a calling, but you can also do that, whatever that is for you, in so many different ways that I do it by some of the things that I post on social media. I do it by helping people personally. I do bioresonance. I teach Qigong. So I do a lot of different things in which I touch people or talk to people. And I don't have to just focus on one thing. It's just realizing that in this moment, this brings me joy. This is how I'm helping someone. Sometimes it's sitting with a friend and having an honest conversation or answering questions, helping them figure things out. That's also, so I know that I'm here to help people and how I do that, I do that in like a bunch of different ways. And I don't fixate on having it look like any one thing. And that's where my mind, my brain, my mind used to get stuck sometimes is that, oh, it has to look a certain way. My life has to look a certain way. And when I let go of what my, I think my life should look like or what other people project at me that my life should look like, then I just enjoy it. And my life is just so much more enjoyable because I just enjoy the things that I do. And it doesn't mean like even now, like the other day, for example, two days ago, I was having a really great conversation with a family member. And then I was, but I was triggered because there was, um, a really deep realization about something and it it's been a real shift for me in the last couple of days so it all comes back to me all the time and how how things are making me feel changing my perspective on something and being willing to look at myself and my life in a different way all the time and not get stuck in what i think i should be doing or what I think my life should be. And that's a tough, it can be a tough thing because I know there's, you know, I'm going to be 50 this year and, you know, early retirement can be 55. And I think about where I am, where about some, you know, the trajectory of people I know their life. And there'll be times where I'm like, wow, like, I don't feel that I should be in any particular place, but I see how people follow you know, a path or, or a program, whatever you want to call it. And I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm just not, I'm just not in that place. And I'm okay with that. Awesome. Thank All you right. so much. Incredible. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Patricia, I'm actually asking her a continuation of our group meditation question, which is, uh, what is our life's purpose? What, what is the inner purpose? Chapter nine uh, of, uh, so Kelly is talking about her own experience. So you missed the beginning part of, of it, um, where I said that in 2012 or 2011, when I found Eckhart, I was like, this is it. And I actually uh, said, I, I want to withdraw from the world. This is spiritual truth. I know the spiritual truth. I want to withdraw from the world. And I blew up my savings trying to like just be on a spiritual path and find a company to work at, which was like spiritually awakened, not realizing another part to it, Kelly, is like our soul needs to learn certain lessons, right? So we have to come across those certain people that I had to, uh, in 2011, um, in the beginning of 20, uh, was it 2011 or 20? Even 2010, yeah, 2010, as soon as I lost my job, 
um, when I look for recruiters, the recruiter asked me to apply at, at a certain company, right? I won't, we are being recorded, so I won't take the name of the company. And then um, I found Eckhart and I was like, no, I, I, I just want to like uh, find something that is really awakened because I know corporate America will be like very stressful, right? Because it's high pressure, deadlines and all that. And so I, um, um, I just started blowing up my savings, right? Paying my credit cards and like building on the credit cards, building debt on the credit cards for a year. I did that for almost a year. I took like a short term gig for five, six months. And then again, like uh, uh, had a period of time until I lost everything, right? That's when, you know, the, the universe is, the weird part is, is when I looked for a job again in 2012, the same company offered me a job. So I was meant somehow, I was meant to come back to that same company, maybe the same. So if you want to talk about that, then we'll go to Caesar. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. As you were speaking, I was going to say like, it's about the conscious participation in the creation of our own life. And for me, that's like a really big purpose. And like you said, there are times, you know, I, when I, for example, for 10 years, I ran a gymnastics club, like from my early twenties or like from 18 to almost well, it was eight years anyway. And then I didn't teach for a while after I quit that job because it, the position I had was very stressful, for example. And a few years later, I was able to pick it up again and then rewrite some things for myself for a few years and then decide that, okay, now I'm finished with that and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to move on to something else. So we don't always have to stick with like one thing all the time, but like you said, like something, the opportunity will come back to you to like you had the opportunity for that company and you recognize that oh it's here again I'm gonna I'm gonna take it this time and then you're gonna see where it goes because you could always have the choice after another year or two to go oh well maybe this wasn't the place that I wanted this isn't the place that I want to stay but this is good for now and then you always have the choice to do something else or to figure out that and I think that's what life is all about, is making those conscious choices for ourselves. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Kelly. Caesar, did you want to speak to this? Thank you. Sure. So I totally love what Kelly said. I mean, just all the way through, very, um, very accurate description of a lot of what I would say as well. Um, and I had a very similar upbringing um my journey was similar to many other people's it was through um deep suffering that brought me into uh really seeking and just in brief i lost um uh, both of my parents and both of my brothers within a very short period of time and i started seeking diligently and even beyond diligently so um christianity um muslim judaism hinduism um zen Confucianism, um, you name it. And it wasn't until I bumped across Tolley's work that everything that I learned just became crystal clear. Um, there was just something about the way it's the simplicity of his work and the way he delivers is like he's writing from that space. Um, I don't believe there's a word or a sentence or a paragraph in that book, any of his books that are just there to fill up a page. Um, every sentence is very deep and meaningful. Um, I didn't grasp the entire book at one time. It took many times reading the book and I recently started to reread on um, the power of now again. And uh, it's amazing how quick we forget little things. Um, but so suffering is what brought me to wanting answers you know to go inside i knew to go inside but i was looking for more direction externally at that point um so the pointers came from eckert's work that uh, enabled everything else to become crystal clear it didn't matter like um christianity the bible the more i you know tried to understand that the more confused i got you know with the parables and the metaphors and um stuff like that 
Um, but again, after Tolly's work, everything was just really super crystal clear. You know, I grew up being intuitive in my early teenage years, um, knowing I had a gift. Uh, and I always like to feel good about helping people. Um, never was one to seek praise or a pat on the back or a thank you. It wasn't necessary because what I got from that um, was invaluable. It was bliss. So once I understood my journey is as um, Kelly was saying, you know, and turned inward for the answers, I knew all the answers were within. Um, I believe we're born with them. Uh, I think Tolly even made a comment that, you know, if Jesus himself came down today, he, there was nothing spiritually that he could actually teach you. He would simply be reminding you of what we have forgotten. Um, and I believe that to be wholeheartedly true, 100%. Um, and as far as, you know, um, our purpose, um, you know, I believe we all came here to learn, expand, grow, and, um, and to help others. Uh, that is my heaven. Yeah, um, I also, you know, I do not believe, um, you know, heaven and hell are a geographical place. I believe heaven is when we do something willingly and we do it and it feels really good. It's passionate. It's blissful. Um, hell is when we have to do stuff that we are not really willing to do, like a job that we might not like. That's to me, that's hell. Um, I learned along my journey that I like to feel good. And one of the things that makes me feel good is helping others um, in any situation. It's just an energy thing. People don't even have to, you know, you can just pick up somebody's vibes um, and kind of get a little picture of what they're going through you know, at that moment. Um, and the more you pay attention to their energy, you can kind of correlate, you know, the momentum on where it came from, how long it's been, you know, that way. Um, and then, of course, with auras, you can kind of tell when somebody's actually transitioning or changing based on their aura, you know. That's just uh, a sign of their energy field and what they're experiencing and going through. So it just paints a big picture. But um, my point is, as far as our purpose is, you have to find something that makes you happy. And it's not like work. Understand money is, is essential in this life, unless you're, you know, you'd be primitive and live off the land. Um, it, if you do something that you truly enjoy, I don't believe like a purpose can be anything other than your true purpose as far as knowing yourself, understanding yourself, and being able to share that with somebody else in the way of compassion and love and, and spreading that type of energy um, to others it is blissful. It, it becomes, the more you do it, and, um, and if that don't make you happy, knowing you help somebody or just smiling at somebody and getting a smile in return, maybe they're having a crappy day and just a simple smile can take them out of that for one second. Um, that just feels good. Um, and I kind of figured that was probably my purpose. Um, once I started to understand and learn about the essence of Caesar, um, the inner being and what this really is, um, it's hard not to believe that my purpose doesn't involve helping people. Um, and of course, you have to help yourself. You have to take the first steps of understanding, knowing, and loving yourself. You have to realize that you are love in order to project this outwards and be able to help. If you can't help yourself, you surely can't help nobody else. You know, um, totally makes a comment again about knowing a tree or just knowing facts about the tree. Once you became in somewhat of an enlightened state or, or really presence gets you there. 
Um, you know, you can know facts about the tree, but that doesn't mean you know the tree. When you can look at that tree in a different way and everything's much more vibrant than it ever seemed, and you can feel that tree, literally. Now you can know the tree as you know thyself. So that was a big, um, that was a big step for me in understanding that and then being able to project outwards um, the love that I possess, the love that I feel I am um, unto others. It, it's, um, I just believe that's everybody's purpose. What we do externally as far as, um, um, you know, a mission or a job or something like this, uh, if it's not being done with love and compassion, uh, it's probably meaningless. So much of what we do in life is meaningless. It just doesn't matter. We just go through the motions um, simply because we have to. We have to work. We have to provide. You know, we have to um, make money and pay for our food and housing and stuff like that. It's part of life. But what you do at that job is what's important. Take time to reflect on yourself and then share that with others. That's what's important. The job really is meaningless when it comes down to it. You know, riding a bike after work and feeling healthy and good is kind of meaningless. However, it's almost necessary um, for myself to try to better my health. And it's just about what you do or how you do it, I should say, not what you do. And if you infuse everything that you do with love and compassion, um, that's your purpose. I don't know how better to put it. I don't think it's one particular thing, but expand, live, learn, grow, um, and help others. Pretty simple. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Caesar. The other aspect to it that I wanted to explain, and I'll move to Patricia after that, so uh, Dean Graziosi he uh, runs the mastermind platform that we do the workshops on. Uh, Kelly is aware of it and Patricia is aware of it. So uh, Dean Graziosi partners, it's a, a platform that Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi both, I think, pitched in money and created that business, right? Called mastermind. Um, and they're, uh, their thing every beginning of the year is to push people into this um, self-education, uh, like they used to call it the self-education revolution two years back. I think they changed it to mastermind last year. Um, they used to get into this thing of um, there's something within you, there's a story within you, right? That you're a bridge builder. And that's where Patricia started. Uh, I mean, she joined mastermind. And she was like, I'm a bridge builder, so what should I be doing uh, kind of thing. Um, and this is uh, what I would say, what uh, Caesar pointed out, the inner purpose is to awaken, right? Uh, that is like our focus should be on our more towards being awakened minute to minute to minute. That's what you're saying, Caesar. It doesn't matter what job you're doing. You do need to pay your bills right? Because that's part of living in this uh, 3D world. We can, like I said, in 2011, when I thought I, I didn't want to do a job. No, there's reality to it. You have to pay your bills. You have to pay rent. You have to pay for your internet access so you can get on Zoom, right? They're basic fundamental things that we have to do until we don't have to do it. So, the uh, purpose at that point in time becomes that we need to earn that job, like earn that living and do it with presence. That's what you're saying, minute to minute to minute. Uh, do it with presence, see where you can interact with. And what I would say is uh, if you say I was biking, um, I feel uh, our inner uh, being so part of the awakening is our, our inner being loves movement right we cannot be static like uh, on mattress island all day long or say I'm going to sit in a meditative 
posture all day long. I, I feel there is a lot of uh, benefit to movement because even I, if I uh, miss walking like in a day or two, the third day I, I, I like get up no matter how cold or hot or whatever it is, I'll get up, put on my jacket, three layers of clothing and then go walk. You were saying something, Caesar? Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. I, I agree. We get stagnant. The energy within us gets stagnant, period. Um, and then it seems like our whole life gets stagnant, um, not moving all the time, literally. Uh, I just wanted to add, too, as far as, um, you know, at the beginning of uh, when you realized your journey or your purpose and you're starting to learn and understand yourself, um, it's like the best relationship you and everything so oh right there and your heart just pitter patters and um it's like that over and over and over and the more you get to know yourself i don't want to sound like um uh, i don't know um narcissistic um but it's i think there's something with your internet connection caesar Is it just me or okay? He disconnected. Yeah, he oh he was cutting out cutting out a bit for me too. So okay, great. Thank you, Kelly. There was some issue with your internet connection, so you may have to repeat what you were saying, Caesar. You're on mute. Okay. There. Thank yep. you. You may have to repeat what you said because we. Couldn't gotcha. hear it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, but I was just saying how getting to understand and know yourself and realize that you are love is a really good feeling. It's like meeting somebody for the first time that you just got a mad crush about. And then you start talking to them. And I'm looking at Kelly right now. And you just, just reminded me of like you and Kelly, you know, when you kind of make that connection and it's just, oh, it just feels good and it feels right. That's the same type of relationship you have to have with yourself. It's fun, it's new, it's exciting. And then all of a sudden, that it seems to be that way with everybody that you encounter. That's not, you don't look at them in the sense of love, I want to be with you. You look at them in the sense of love, period. It just feels good. A relationship is a relationship, period. It doesn't matter if you're just crossing paths in a store, um, if it's the same sex. This is not um, you know, a sexual way I'm speaking of. It's just simply to know that love, what real true love is, to know that you are love and that's what you're radiating. Um, that's what others are picking up from you and giving it right back in return. That just feels really, really good. Every relationship you know, along the way just seems like magical and it feels good and it feels right and feels loving and compassionate. And um, it's just amazing how the tables have turned over the years because growing up, it was quite the contrary. Um, you know, I was just, I was in a band and they rode a motorcycle and whatever, but life was just really fast. And then to come to this side and start to know myself better because I ne never gave it two seconds until, you know, um, I, I was faced with this, the deep suffering. Um, and, and I'm grateful for all of it. You know, death is a part of life. So once you understand, you know, what acceptance is, that part becomes really easy to accept. Hey, it's just part of the process, baby. Um, but yeah, just every relationship you encounter is just, it just feels really, really good. The desire to, you know, be with somebody for me has disappeared. Um, that doesn't mean that, um, you know, uh, thinking about staying, staying, seeing if that's what it is, it is what it is. Um, I'll just enjoy this time and whoever enters the timeline, then I'll enjoy it you know, while it happens or whatever. But yeah, you know, there's no, um, it's just crazy. I'm just happy. I'm just content with just whatever it is, however it is, the way it is, totally cool with it. Just feels good, no matter what. Sorry. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Caesar. Incredible. Patricia, did you want to continue your question and ask uh, or speak to it? What more did you want to know? Thank you. Hello, purpose. <laughs> Hi, everyone. And so sorry I was a little late. 
That's that's incredible. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing your story. I loved it. I mean, honestly, as far as the human body, you look like you're 30. I mean, that's crazy saying you're going to be 50. Like, uh, what kind of time are you living? Because that's what you're like counting double every year. <laughs> because that energy, that that youth in you, that that child like like seeing the world like it's the first time being excited i think that's purpose isn't it just enjoying the life we have we we got an uh, experience right it's a gift so we're living a life and yes we you know brought some contract with us so we have to transcend certain lessons to get to that, to get that enjoyment, to realize that life is so precious. And yes, we can be a stone, we can be a rock, we can be a tree, that wouldn't be the same experience. Yes, it's also part of consciousness, but it's a different energy. Like we as human humans, we can do almost anything. It's so cool. <laughs> so then you can co-create your purpose almost. If if you, like Kelly said, out of love, if you are of enjoyment and appreciation and Caesar always say gratitude, look at him. He's so happy just being. So, and then whatever you do, like Eckhart says, from that state of presence, it's like, even if you're walking, it's amazing. Just a simple, like, being present, just being, and then putting that being into doing creates an incredible stuff. I mean, creative people, artists, musicians, um, even engineers, I mean, when they were in that state of creativity, that the genius that they almost like down were downloaded the information from the quantum field because some of the inventions there's no way like human almost mind could have figured it out <laughs> right so there's that connection with that quantum field and we becomes just like a vessel receptors and just enjoying. I think consciousness wants humans to grow, to experience different things, to enjoy life, this form, and um, give it back the information. How does it feel to be Patricia in this time? You know, what what is it like? So experiencing things, but not forcing yourself to, you know, jump off the plane. It's not necessarily, <laughs> but unless you want to. But uh, there is humility in it, I think. For me, this is how I, because ego, oh yeah, I'm so special, you know, look at me. Um, it didn't, didn't go that way. It, I couldn't reach that pure joy of breathing and hugging a tree or just speaking with a, another human being when I, when it was about my ego, what, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to be better the judgment? So discovering that part, that maybe our purpose is to reconnect with the divine in us, however you define it. And um, I also remember Eckhart saying somewhere that, like, if you're sitting, like if I'm right now talking to you, my purpose is to talk to you. And that's it. There's nothing else. If I'm walking across the room, my purpose in that moment is to walk across the room. <laughs> so, but I know humans want those ambitions plan. What's my purpose? What's my mission? So I was given an exercise over a year ago. Uh, since I was doing career coaching and it's 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 a very good program also based on Tony Robbins and following the formula and uh, it was about soul 
uh, soul powered, soul powered everything. So bring your soul to work. So you're not just going to work to, to do the numbers, to talk to the customer, to sell, to think. You bring in your soul. So no matter what you do, you're bringing the soul to work. And that makes all the difference. So the concept somehow, I was very attracted to it. Because I figure if I just go and learn how to write a super great resume that's going to be picked up by a lot of employers, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be miserable as I was in my last job. If I don't change anything, if I don't change understanding, why am I here? So I did the program and one of the first lessons was, what's your soul's mission? Write your soul's mission. I'm like, oh, shoot. And I just closed my eyes and I, because I already was familiar with um, Eckhart Tolle and I started also this group. So, okay, let me connect and see what's my soul's mission. And a silly sentence came out and I wrote it down and it stayed with me. And I, it says to share beautiful moments with others, beautiful experiences. I'm like, that sucks. First, I'll, I'll right away judge, like to share what, what's, I mean, I, I felt like, but it just came out and I realized that every moment is beautiful. So if I can share that field of presence and hold the field of presence for others, everything becomes beautiful. You know, noticing miracles are, are sunrise or stars and our eyes that we can see that or just interaction with another humans even traffic just driving being so grateful i feel going over the bridge now over big hudson river and just thinking in my heart for all people that build that bridge for all earth elements that build the bridge so i can drive and all the other drivers that are with me on that bridge because if it was just nobody just would would have built the bridge just for me so we we have to be together you know on certain certain places to to uh, move each other forward and i think I really like what Eckhart says, said also that it's the consciousness likes to be playful, likes to create and grow. So each one of us has that part. And once we enjoy, um, we do that in so many different ways. Sometimes just baking something cool or just writing a poem I know and this is actually something that I was always thinking about it's like um, how many composers there have been already how many pieces of music been created and still are the songs and still are the books even and still every year there's more it's like how is it possible isn't that like people like there's a limit of the possibilities but no because there was never someone like me before so the way I'm experiencing and the way I'm creating is very unique so it's not worse or less than anybody else but it's just my experience but I think finding joy finding joy I would say it's our purpose On Friday, you were, uh, so what made you uh, a little bit, um, almost like disturbed in your soul about what Dean Graziosi taught last week, Thursday, that you were shook up once he, once you watched him for two or three hours, that you were not leading your purpose. Right, right, like right now you're talking about as though you're very contented, but you were not contented on Friday after listening to Dean Graziosi on Thursday. So that's the part that I want, hmm. I, I want you to have that peace, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that, that is true. So uh, one of the things that we need to focus on is, um, 
or a little bit of understanding that we need to have is the way Tony and Dean teach, right? They're teaching people that are general off the street, have no spiritual depth. They're generally like walking down the street and they're picking up somebody from off the street and saying, okay, develop this, develop a sense of gratitude. Like this Monday you were saying, develop a sense of gratitude. I mean, for being on the spiritual path, we already are grateful. Right. Right. We don't need to, Dean Graziosi does not need to tell me that I need to write a gratitude, five, five points of gratitude uh, thing, right? Every day, write three, uh, three things that you're grateful for, or uh, every day, write four things that you're grateful for. Dean Graziosi does not need to tell Patricia that, right? So there are a lot of mindset uh, type of things that Tony and Dean talk about. I mean, even though Tony is doing this unshakable, unshakable uh, session challenge, right? Whatever he's going to teach, you're superseded that. You have, you are doing Dr. Joe's meditations. You've been doing Anthony Williams. One at the physical level, you're cleansing already, right? So mm -hmm. you're making a perfect body. You're getting more and more towards perfection in your physical body, right? What Caesar talked about, we need to take care of our body, right? We need to make it move. We need to give it good, healthy stuff. You're taking care of the physical body. You're taking care of your spiritual body, right? You're doing your meditations. The people You have to understand the people that Dean is uh, targeting, they have none of this foundation. Um, yeah I'm ta I'm almost like I feel that I'm going back it's it's gonna be almost full circle so he keeps saying Tony that he's a strategist and I'm like okay so I need to follow his how but the only way I know what would be through the meditations through the connection to divine through finding that a, like alignment with the source because it's almost like I want to have the machine ready because I'm in the same time also meditating with Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza doing the energy healing and everything so I can be empty to actually hear what I can do here because I want I actually want to do something I do I from the time I remember it was like little kid I had this ha thought in my head I want my life to be worth of a movie I want someone to to think I it's not that the sound it's gonna happen but it was like my wish because I really liked and I'm still attracted to movies based on actual people and of their lives what heroes real life heroes they when they were living and struggling and creating stuff they didn't know they were heroes they were just living their life and now we watching that movie and getting we are getting so inspired about their story so my hope for myself was that I can actually do something in my life or be someone that will be worthy of a story but again maybe that was just because I felt it's not enough you know for my dad and so I needed to kind of say like, look see I made something of myself I don't know if that was where it was coming from but it kind of felt good and maybe I'll just change the like Kelly was talking about that sometimes heart and ego want the same thing it's just the way how we approach it how we do it and how that will affect other people versus instead of using others pe other people for our purpose, actually helping bring them up, you know, inspire them, giving them a tool that will make their life better. They, they will make them grow because I think that's what Anthony Williams does at Cartel, every spiritual teacher there's almost like they could be gone because they reached their enlightenment. They can just like, buy, I'm done. You guys on your own, but they're staying here 
to share their insight and inspiration and that presence. And look how many people are attracted to this. They, 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 we all crave it on, on some deep level. So there are the teachers that are a little further ahead, right? So they're the bridges, right? That's, that's what I see it. So showing us the way, but it's still our way. How are we going to go on that bridge? If we're going to dance, if we're going to go backwards, if we're going to wear, you know, pink shoes, or we're going to get boots. I mean, <laughs> still. what I wanted, what I wanted to, what I wanted to tell you, Patricia, one second, Kelly, and then I'll give it to you. Um, what I wanted to say is how much ever Dean and Tony talk about strategy and uh, uh, they have this uh, marketing strategy or they have this strategy that applies to somebody. And this is what I was trying to explain through messaging, which I couldn't, um, that applies to somebody who already knows what they're going to be doing, right? If somebody knows that they're going to be, a, their general uh, following is somebody who is into fitness, or uh, we have uh, Agatha who's doing vegan living cuisine, right? He gives the example of the vegan living cuisine, right? He uses Agatha as an example. There's one person that already is doing how to uh, resolve menopause through natural beans, not use medication or anything of that sort, go through uh, she, I think she calls it menopositivity or something like that, right? Um, so these people already went through something and they know what their path is. They, they know what, they, what topic, around what topic can they speak? What is their topic that they are authoritative about? Does that make sense to you? Like yes. Agatha already has been doing vegan cuisine for 20, 30 years, right? So she Let's can talk speak- about your poem. She I can... know you did it. So your is limiting beliefs, right? She, and I'll, I'll come to mine my, my as well. So you have to realize that what they are targeting is a person that already knows what, so what you have to figure out when you go into the depths of, and every person needs to figure that this out. The inner purpose is to awaken, to figure out what is my soul. The inner purpose we know, right? Everybody knows that is to live joyfully. What everyone said, what Kelly said, what Caesar said, is to live this unconditional love. Um, inner purpose I know that I need to be in presence. I know my inner purpose, but there is an outer purpose to the inner purpose, right? There's, there is an outer purpose. And the outer purpose is always something that Caesar pointed out is to serve somebody else. Is to be of service. Now Patricia has to figure out how can she serve somebody else? In what method can, and that goes into the quantum when you are nobody, nowhere, nothing, no time, right? You ask, how can I uh, serve this purpose? What is the purpose that I can serve? What is it? Show me a sign. Divine, show me a sign. How can I serve? This is the question you should be asking the divine. Kelly cannot give you that answer. Because I cannot tell Kelly what, she, what is her purpose. I cannot tell Caesar what is his purpose. Caesar cannot tell me what is my purpose. So on that level, right? on that level, like you said that life kind of prepares us for certain things when we're young and we don't even know, you know, in what way. So my father refused to pay for my English lessons, which at that time you, you only were forced in Poland to learn Russian. Mm -hmm. My mom, who saw that other kids are being put to private lessons in school, said, no, let her, let her go for English. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm not going to pay for it unless it's free. So she secretly paid for it. So I can take, and I was like, I think a year behind. So I, I was sitting in that classroom, felt so horrible. And when everybody could speak certain sentences, I was still learning the colors. But there was a drive in me, okay, that I, I wanted to do it. Then I went, when I graduated high school, 
I wanted to uh, do either an, something with the environment, protection of the environment. That was the department of uh, Warsaw University that I went. There was art, there was Academy of Art, or business, management, marketing, business. I went to all of them for the introduction to see which one. And somehow life put me to business. I could choose every single one. And that was, you know, driving me how, you know, to, to lead, how to do marketing, how to do sponsorship and stuff. My, my master thesis was about, there was a first in Poland written about sponsorship, you know, how to connect higher purpose of business, how to, you know, share like love for art, music, sponsoring certain events so other people can enjoy it while promoting an image of the company. So, so the companies that are not just about, you know, profit, 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 stuff like this. So then, you know, I came to United States, I couldn't work because I didn't have permission. I started again on the bottom. Okay. And then now, at that point, after all different experiences, I'm being put by my boss as a di director of marketing. It's almost like, what? Because he hired me as a CSR manager because that's what they needed. You know, I was doing the meetings and how to communicate with, with uh, our customers, changing everything into po positive language, listening. I mean, saying this is a human being on the other side of the phone. Don't worry about, you know, and just listen to a human being. Help. We are in service. Like promoting that. And then, you know, this year, he's like, yeah. We Realize what your manager is doing has nothing to do with your outer purpose. That's one thing I wanted to let you know. And let me go to Kelly because I Kelly's waiting to... That has nothing to do with your outer purpose. That I is thought nothing that's what you do for a living. That is nothing to do with your outer purpose. And let it me is. go to Kelly. I will, I, will, I, will right. talk, I, will, I will talk about it. Uh, go ahead, Kelly. I, I wanted to ask Patricia a couple of questions, actually. The first one is just so I have the context right, is that last week you were listening to something uh, that someone Dean, was Dean Gracias. Yeah. And, and were you triggered? by what they said, like to feel like you were triggered to have feelings of feeling less than or something like that? No, no, no. I really liked it, but- Well, I, I didn't say you didn't like it. I asked one... if you were triggered. <laughs> no, no, I think it was something, not maybe less, but I kind of wanted to have what he has. Okay, that, that, yeah. That, that, that uh, enthusiasm and energy and- a message and actually you know I see how I mean I guess I see from what amount of people he attracts that he makes lives better for others by showing how, how he did it and he's very so tra transparent about him you know don't growing up with this so whatever his story is sto such a you know okay so I here's my second that. question to you if I said to you right now that you are already living your purpose, how does that make you feel? That you are already living your purpose, how does that make you feel when I say that? <laughs> oh my God, I love you, Kelly. But Poonam said, I <laughs> don't, I don't. <laughs> no, 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 she actually didn't say that. She was saying that your job, that, that what your manager's doing doesn't have to do with your purpose because I'm listening to you and I want to know more of your story. Like when I hear you talk, you're like, oh, but this person has a story and, and they're saying it and so inspiring. And I'm listening to you talk about how you learned English, even though it was really difficult, how you moved to another country all by yourself. Do you know how inspiring that is, especially to other people who are going to do that? The one thing that we often don't realize is how important our story already is because it's so easy to just go well it's my life it's not that important other people are so much more important than me but I'm listening to you and I'm like you've done a lot of things in your life that I haven't done and maybe I won't because that's not my life but I would love if you 
Like, have you ever thought of writing a book about your experiences as a child, your experiences moving to another country or learning English? Because, you know, that's just an idea, not that you have to, but when I, I listen to you talking and how you are already living your purpose, you just don't realize it. And you're going to expand on that. And how you expand on that, you're just going to have to let it come to you. But I'm listening to him like, I want to know more. I don't know about anybody else on here, but that's why I wanted to ask you if I said to you, if you're already living your purpose, how does that make you feel? Amazing. <laughs> but I still like, wait a second. So my life is my purpose. And every experience that I had on the way was kind of a purpose, which I said before, whatever you're doing in that moment is your purpose. And just putting it together and um, pr presenting to others as an interesting story, maybe entertaining, maybe inspiring, maybe. Well, something. And where does the feeling come from that you're, that you being who you are isn't enough? Because that's a little bit of a sense that I get from you that it's like, oh, but it's not enough. And because I'm like, the way, you are because the way so much. Because I know how Dean Graziosi he works, uh, Kelly. He wants us to purchase some kind of uh, product from him, right? So he's going to make you feel, oh, uh, look at what's happening to the economy. Look at the polit Like right. He uses, actually, he teaches this in his marketing strategy. If you listen, if you go through Project Next yeah. completely, Patricia, that is part of the marketing strategy is, and if you look at my sales copy of my, uh, the thing I put that in my sales copy, I used to do it in our workshop too, because I used to say, um, are you, uh, uh, are you feeling like get into the feeling of the avatar, right? Get into their fear. So the, what is the, what is the fear? I can see how he's generating the fear within us. That, oh, the world, the government is not going to save you. The leaders are not going to come save you. You are here to save yourself. How are you going to save yourself uh, uh, kind of thing, right? But all those words, don't you realize that is for somebody who does not know who they truly are, who needs to get, be transformed. You are already transformed. You already know who you truly are in your essence because you have glimpses of it through your meditation. You get into that nobody, no one, nothing. You have glimpses of it, so you know. But there are people out there, the 70,000 people that he has as a following, they don't know who they are. are. They're just running a rat race, right? And uh, not not a very good rat race. Maybe they're not satisfied with their job. They are having a cantankerous relationship with their spouses. N not a really good uh, uh, a relationship situation, right? So uh, with their parents, with their families, and then he's trying to inspire those to try and understand who is he targeting, right? And still thinking, oh, he's targeting me. Think who is he, you have to know that the work that, this is what I wanted you to know, that the fact that you're already doing, you've been doing medical medium protocol and now you've become steady on your meditation as well, that will be sufficient to take you towards your outer purpose. And the signs for your outer purpose will come automatically. And this is where I'll give you my example. In year 2019, is when I, 2016 is when I started this group. In 2019, I had just gone through school of awakening and I went, I, I don't want to just keep posting posts. You know, every Facebook group does that. They give a post, they put a picture, give a post, give a picture, right? So what more can I do for my group? So I had a friend, Parker. Parker and I started creating, uh, teaching videos. If you look in my YouTube channel, they're teaching videos about all of Eckhart's teachings, pain, body. We, we used to do this topic thing, right? Then in uh, 2020, we started the Facebook Live. In May of 2020, we said, okay, what more can we do? Let's do q and A. It just comes automatically. Uh -huh. it, it, it comes just like meeting Christina. 
like you ask the universe, hey, I need a moderator in the group. And I go to uh, Eckhart's big community, a community in presence, and I see Christina responding to people, even though she's Spanish, I saw her responding to people and her responses were accurate. So I messaged her directly and I said, hey, would you mind, do you think you can be a moderator for my group? And she said, yeah, and she's been my moderator since 2019. It's been three years, right? And Christina, I love Christina. I mean, unconditional love. We've had this close bond for three years. The universe responds, just understand that when you get to the depth of presence, the universe just responds with answers. You ask a question and the response will come, the sign will come. This is one thing I want, your outer purpose will automatically unfold. You don't have to struggle. And I'll go to back to Kelly and Caesar and ask them, how did their purpose unfold? And I'll give you an example of mine. Um, um, I started reading Nature of Personal Reality and realized that limiting beliefs, I was so passionate about limiting beliefs. I've talked about it during the Facebook Live Q&A. And then I was talking to one of my coworkers in 2019, 2019, she said, why don't you write a book? You talk so much about it, why don't you write a book? And she said, I'll, I'll publish it. We lost connection in 2020 because of the pandemic, right? So I was just looking on Facebook. I was like, oh, I've written these many pages. Now, I mean, I've finished the book. Uh, where do I find a publisher? And here is a friend of mine who I just know as a, a manager, a ex coworker. He posts something about being a publisher. So I message him. I say, hey, I have a book. Would you be willing? Because it's a spiritual text, right? They may not be willing to publish it because publishers ignore, like they say, they refuse to publish certain types of text. And he said, yeah, I'm willing to publish it. I published the book. The same thing with workshops. Like I was just, uh, I just signed up for Tony's, uh, I don't know what he used to call during the pandemic in 2020. Uh, he called it some uh, Unleash the Power. It was giant, something about the giant, I think, within. Then last year it was the um, UPW, Unleash Power Within. And no, it year, was called um, the New World, New You Challenge. It was called the New yeah. World, New You Challenge, which was this four-day challenge that he does in January, right? They both do things in January. Then that one fed me into another challenge called Own Your Future Challenge. That's when Dean Graziosi in 2021, um, 2021 is when we started workshops, right? Yes, I in was. 2021, uh, March, uh, April timeframe is when I started doing the um, mastermind, right? May. In May of 2021 is when I got into Mastermind. And then September 2021 would be when we published the so first he course. Provided you, he provided you with a platform. I just needed the platform and I needed to learn some of the, I mean, marketing and sales is what I need, is how to do marketing and sales. But I'll go to Kelly. Kelly, you want to talk about how it, it just unfolds. No, no thinking, oh, what is my outer purpose? There was no, there's no focus on what is my outer purpose. It's just why unfolds. Can it be, why can it be the opponent before, uh, why can it be unfolding at the workplace? Why have to be unfolding outside? Like in your case, it was something you did after hours to, to fuel your soul and you still did your work, you know, whatever. But maybe for me, I just, because Maybe. the work, the workplace cannot be your outer purpose is because um, that is something that you uh, just are, um, because it's give and take, because you're giving your effort and you're, uh, you're paying your bills through it, right? So you're receiving more than you're giving. This is more a giving. I give more than I receive because I've selflessly given the group meditation. I mean, I've been doing group meditations since 2019, free of cost, week after week. Uh, I mean, first time it was like once in two weeks, right? There's no payment for it, right? 
So I give, when we give more than we receive, is that becomes the outer purpose. This is the perfect answer. We have to give more than what we receive in that transaction. In a, a work situation, you're doing, uh, you're receiving more than you're giving because you're being paid more than, like you're giving your effort, but you're being paid for it, right? And you pay your bills and you, you're taken care of because of it. Does that make sense? So the receiving is more in that in that transaction. The receiving is more. It changed it for me a little bit. It was like that before that I only went work for paycheck. Now I actually don't even look at it. I mean, yes, I have to pay my bills and my daughter's stuff, but I just love doing what I'm doing. You know, so you may I'm, love you. You may love what you're doing, but that will not be your outer purpose. The outer purpose is. Your mindset is correct that you need to be serving somebody. And let me go to Kelly so that she can explain herself. But do you see how I'm, I've been serving more than, uh, I mean, but, I've been- Yes, when will I find out what's my purpose then? I just, I'm- mm. Kelly, <laughs> I'll let her explain it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, okay. There's, I, I also think of like selfless service as that it, that it is also an equal give and take because when I'm teaching people like a Qigong class, for example, I'm giving something to them, but their feedback and their willingness to be there and their willingness to learn is also giving me back something in return. Like we had our first uh, class, like starting up after the new year last night. And it was really wonderful to see people back and smiling and the progress that people had made. And so I have a little bit of, because we you, you do have to be careful in the way that you can give so much of yourself that you give so much of yourself away, you have nothing left for you. So sometimes with the selfless service that it's something that people just have to, you have to watch that too. If you like what you do at, at your job, my perspective is just that that can be part of your purpose is that you actually feel too as if you're you're serving when you go because you're enjoying it and by giving away the joy that comes from you that is part of your purpose is to be joyful is that the job you're going to stay out for the rest of your life i don't know i don't know and the more you go inside like i love what you were saying punam about how like Tony Robbins and Dean Grazioso, how they market to a specific kind of person. When you understand the, the marketing hooks, like it, it actually is designed so that it hooks into our current programming so that then they can teach you something to deprogram, which is kind of a mind mess, <laughs> right? Because, but that's what they do. They're, they're trying to hook you in to get you to learn something that you can then use to better your life or to discover your purpose. But I do feel with you, Patricia, that you're like we were saying before, is that you're kind of past that, where you've already, you already see some of those things already. So part of the, the purpose is like, if you were triggered to feel like, oh, it's just clearing out that old feeling of I'm not doing enough or I haven't done enough. And when you clear out that from you, things that you want to do will become clear. And if you have a really good idea for something, take notes, write it down, sit with it. Like there's a new program that we put together and it came to me. And oftentimes what happens is I can get really excited about something and run away with it. And then I have to stop. Kelly's laughing because yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I know what her question is. I'm getting there. And um, that- I, I typed it in for Kelly. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, Thank sorry. You. I thought you were trying to keep me on track. No, 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 no. I do no. tend to wrap up. For, for Ke Kelly. Thank yeah. you. Um, is that I, I sat with it and I kind of let the excitement, that energy sort of just settle so that I could really feel if this was something that I had energy to do, that I wasn't going to put more of myself into it that I might get back. And how did I want it to develop? And then as I sat with it, it just was like, well, you can do this. And then there's this, and I could feel it building. And then I sat down with Kelly and I said, okay, I have this idea. 
you know, how do you feel about this? And, you know, we didn't jump on it or act on it right away. We, we sat with it and we kind of felt it out. We're like, okay, we could do this. And then it just kind of unfolded. And that's not our entire purpose. It's just part of our purpose. And I think sometimes we can get so focused on like, I have to have a purpose. I have to have the one thing that's different than everybody else or something. And it's a process. It, it's an unfolding. It's like unfolding those layers. Like, what do you feel that you want to do first? I don't know what that is for you, Patricia, because it's different for everybody listening tonight. It's different for everyone on the panel. Like when Poonam was sharing her story, for me, I never thought I'd be a Qigong teacher. I started taking it because of health issues that I had physically. And I was like, I need something that's different. And I started taking Kelly's classes. And then we got talking. And then <laughs> just like, when you allow things to unfold, things become more clear. But sometimes we lock ourselves down because I got to find that thing. And maybe there's not one thing. Maybe you'll do a bunch of different things. And then all of a sudden they'll all come together and you're like, ta-da, there's like a bigger thing. So I, it's, it, for me, it's, it's a process of how, how to find the outer purpose because your inner purpose is to awaken. And the more you awaken, then you'll be like inspired to do something. The more you can create, right? That's right. Yeah. Being conscious to participate in your own life. Beautiful. I used to paint too. I used to paint. So I have a question, Kelly. Yeah. Do you want to take through the timeline of what you've been doing since you changed your purpose? You said okay. you were, and what I feel is because you were a gymnastics instructor yeah. that, that worked with, this is where the vehicle is prepared, right? You are yeah. a gymnastics instructor. So doing the Qigong, it kind of marries, right? Because this is a physical discipline with form and this is a physical discipline with form as well. So it's easier for you to do Qigong where other people may say, oh, that's not for me uh, kind of thing. So if you want to talk about that, then we'll go to Kelly so that he yeah. can wrap it up. Thank you. Yeah, well, and, and part of that like journey, okay, just Qigong, for example, is that I had injuries as a gymnast that I didn't completely heal from. And then I had four babies and then I, that kind of exacerbated those injuries. And I had other injuries that I didn't know that I had. And so it was a process of my own, of my physical body being like, Hey, you haven't been paying attention to me. And I thought I had, because I exercised, I ate right. I did all these things, but I wasn't paying attention to how I was feeling. So that's why I always go back to how does your body feel? Even when you're inspired to do something am I inspired from a place of like lack that oh I have to do this because I need money or I need something or am I inspired from a place in my heart where I feel joy and I want to do it so yeah if with gymnastics it's a very um I was very good as a gymnast because of the way my ability to feel and my ability to be able to um just feel my body and to be able to do all the things I could do and then when I started doing Qigong, I went, oh, this challenges me in the same way, but totally different. And it was a much more a very healing experience. And I had no intention of ever teaching it. But because of my background, because I have a degree in physical movement as well, that I know how to look at other people and help them move more efficiently. So I know how to physically do that. And then because of the energy work that I do, I also know how important it is physical movement is for energy movement, for the movement of the emotions out of our tissues. So it tied a lot of things together, but that was a process of learning. You know, first it was having the, the health scare and then having uh, some healing facilitators to work with, working with therapists and then, you know, finding Qigong, like it was, there's a lot of time involved. And so never think that you're running out of time because that's what our ego always thinks is like, why am I not doing my purpose? And that's why I asked you before, what if I said to you, you're, you're doing your purpose right now. You're already doing it. And now you're going to unfold another layer of that and do something else or another one and another one. And it's just going to keep growing and be excited about what it's going to turn into. So that, I'll, I'll leave it there. 
unless there's another question. And what was your path? Like you said, you were a writer and then you were a gymnast. So if you want to take us oh. through like the past few dec decades of- yeah. Well, I was a gymnast. Thinking. I was a gymnast and then I was a coach. And when I had my health scare, part of it was that I'd always wanted to write a book. And I just figured if I never tried, I would never know if I could do it. So me be becoming an author was just that I wanted to try it. I wanted to see what would happen. And then I learned about a completely different industry and a completely different thing. And it brought other people into my life and other um, earning opportunities. And so I was an actor and a voice actor. But throughout that whole time, I was also doing energy healing. And, you know, for a couple, for a while, it's not really something that I talked about openly, but I, that was something that I did for myself. So I worked with a lot of different healers. I did different modalities and yeah, right. Like Caesar says, like grid, the grid filling and all the, yeah. So I, just because like externally I was an author or a voice actor or a gymnastics coach, I was doing my work internally the entire time. And sometimes I had facilitators and a lot of times I do it by myself. And that was really my most important job was working on myself and continuing to improve myself because the more that I opened myself up and let go of things and could feel the possibilities, then other opportunities to do other things in my life came. So being an author, I had a fundraiser. That's where I met Kelly. I started doing Qigong. So then I did Qigong and then we started teaching together. And all the while I still did other outside things you know, and then we, he wanted to teach with me and then we started a thing, you know, so that's like the timeline and, you know, my journey of awakening, if you want to call it that started 25 years ago. And so my purpose has always been to serve myself, to make sure that I'm doing my work and then to radiate that outward. And I had to let go of what that was going to look like on the outside because I wouldn't know how that was going to look or how I was going to affect someone else. You know, um, I'll give a quick example because I know the other, you want the other people to talk. I met with someone, we had coffee and they said, you know what? I've, I've read all your books. And I went, oh, you have? That's awesome. She's like, well, or she didn't read all of them yet, but she's like, I want to read the rest. And then we started talking about it because the genre that I was writing in then was romance. And we started having a conversation about sexuality and being sexual beings and how she was just very inspired to feel more free within herself. And that was a real gift. So you could be giving people a gift that you don't know yet, that you might not find out until later, or you might never know, but never, but always know that when you are doing anything from a place of love, somebody is receiving that benefit. And that is your purpose. Beautiful. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you for, now you see both our timelines, right? You saw some of my timeline and you saw Kelly's. So let's go to Kelly. If you want to talk about this, Kelly, uh, Patricia has a question. How should she discover her outer purpose? Thank you. Yep. Um, good to see everybody tonight. I'm out of my, my dad still. Long day, good day. Um, outer purpose. This is <clears throat> the the first purpose that you have is to awaken yourself, it is to honor your heart, honor your spirit, and honor your soul contract to be on this planet. The simple fact that you are on this planet means that you are a highly advanced spiritual being. That's it. Doesn't matter what level of external consciousness or awareness you are at, doesn't matter. The simple fact that so many souls are coming to this planet to learn duality, to learn the extremes of feeling. Anyone who's on this planet is a highly evolved spiritual being. It is our choice to either awaken or not and decide what level of, of awareness we want to grow into. Um, outer purpose is a reflection of where you're at awareness-wise. You, you know, 
I, I really appreciated, you know, the, the whole timeline thing is really a great point of reference because it demonstrates how things evolve. It's just constantly evolving. There's no one outer purpose. Uh, having, having spent almost 30 years servicing others, serving others in the environmental community. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't come out right. Um, serving others in the environmental community and in the First Nations, there is a lot learned by serving and being of service to people who have no gratitude. Um, who, you know, regardless of ethnic background, be they uh, Caucasian or someone of color, be they East Indian or First Nation. If you are dealing with greedy people, if you are dealing with um, morally corrupt people, sometimes that is the lesson. And that, that is your purpose, is to be there in that moment at that time. If you are doing your work inside, like honestly, spiritually, you can be anywhere. You can be sitting in the middle of a big, huge garbage heap and embodying divine light. And it doesn't matter. It does not matter. The fact that you are blessed with a home and a roof over your head and a job is sort of like icing on the cake because of the way the world is these days. And your life purpose or your, your I mean, what do you want it to be? How do you want to serve yourself? How do you want to best express the joy that you feel in your heart when you are aligned with yourself? What does that look like? I, I know I came in sort of like at that point where people were talking about Tony Robbins and certain other people. And I have been watching the self-help guruship mentorship arena for 30 years. And it's all the same. They all want to convince you that you need to find your life's purpose so they can sell you the book that'll tell you how to find your life's purpose. Except your life's purpose is already being fulfilled by the simple fact that you are here on this planet. It's a little hard to get your mind around because the ego is like, yeah, but we're supposed to be like special and, you know, ascension this and that and the other thing. And, you know, some of us are just like sitting here, you know, watching the movie unfold and eating our popcorn. And, you know, find what makes you happy. Find those things that inspire you, that, that cause those explosions of inspiration in your whole body, not just your mind, not just your heart. When you are aligned with the divine, it's a whole body experience. It is not a mental thing. It is not a, it's the, the knowing is so far beyond anything the mind can understand consciously. That's why you need to feel it. This is why having a physical discipline is so important. Because having a physical discipline brings everything together in the moment, in the physical present moment, like literally tap, 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 tap. <laughs> you in there? So what question, what question can I ask my mind, let's say, before I lie down today in bed? Because you say find. I kind of have certain things that make me happy, but I don't know if that's that the entire, like for me, set, standing on the beach, mm -hmm. at the sunset, and just feeling that the little particles of salty water on my face and the breeze and just looking at this enormous space beauty, right. that is what, so, but, but you can't just stand on the beach forever and do nothing, right? Maybe you're supposed to take pictures of it and sell it. <laughs> put, put them on t-shirts you want some of this here it is you know there's a there's a lot of online then, stuff when i'm said that that the life the life purpose is when you when we do it it for free when we kind of give it away no i i didn't help. say do it for free i said when we are of service when we are not taking the 
the receiving is not the same as um, like the balance has to be like in a in a job we are receiving what when we are giving in a job we are being paid for it so the receiving and and giving is balanced right look at dean graziosi and tony robbins uh, patricia they do the three-day challenge or they do a five-day challenge because they're giving more than they're receiving they're doing it for free but then they turn it around and sell a product does yep. that make sense in every aspect yep. The giving Eckhart Tolle at 73 years old, 74 years old, he doesn't need to travel, but look at his giving, right? He still hosts retreats. So it, the giving is more than the receiving. When that happens mm -hmm. in the universe responds and gives you more, it'll give you more of people that will want what you're trying to speak about. So the right. question, the question that I can ask myself would be, how can I give more? How can I serve humanity? I've been asking that no. question ever. No. How morning. do I serve myself? How do I serve myself? You serve yourself first. You serve yourself first and you learn what that is like, because when you understand that serving others happens with every single breath. No matter what you're doing. Why why are my eyes are right now filling with tears when you said how can I serve myself? I don't know. That is crazy. That just happened. Because it's so much easier to give to other people than it is yes. to ourselves. Yes. And when you ask yourself, what is it that I want? What yes. makes me happy? that mm -hmm. joy like we've been talking about all night radiates out everywhere and then people yep. want that and that's how you serve them is because yes. you have your joy yes sorry to interrupt no no <laughs> perfect um, perfect it's true you serve when you serve yourself you are serving creation you are a manifestation of creation you are a manifestation of god of the divine essence of everything so when you serve yourself, you are giving, you are honoring. But she, and but she is, uh, she is already Kelly. She is serving herself in the sense that she has started this past year. She did the Anthony Williams physical body, taking care of a physical body. She also has started doing her meditations. So she, she is already taking care of mm. her spirit, spiritual Put part. On. part. Put on. Right. Put on. Mm-hmm she's starting to understand she's not taking care of and serving herself yet she's starting to these are steps towards understanding that i i appreciate that you know the path that she's been on and i appreciate that you understand the steps that she has taken but pay attention to the experience that she's having right now in this moment when i told her about serving herself this is a very important moment the past is leading up to this moment right now where mm -hmm. Patricia is feeling the truth of how much deeper she can serve herself. Because this is what's going on. This is the buildup. This is why we have an evolution. I understand that Patricia's been working. She's been working really hard. Mm -hmm. I watched the evolution. I, I, want, I wanted to recognize that effort, right? Oh, that, I absolutely do. That it's not like... You're crying, Patricia, but you're not acknowledging. The, I mean, I keep appreciating you and commending you. I say you're commendable, even on the fact that you're serving, the serving of using Anthony Williams's protocol or serving yourself through meditations. Coming in for every Facebook Live for the past, more than a year, you come every week, no matter high water, no matter what weather, how you're serving other people by being here and asking questions. I commend you for that. Mm -hmm. You're not realizing, you're not owning that. You're not owning that part of you. Yes, I completely agree with that. You That's what I wanted to recognize. I wanted to, you to recognize. And what Kelly's saying is correct is, the inspiration comes from, I mean, I found it joyful to do the meditations in 2019 when I started 
it's joyful to come and do the Facebook Live Q&A. I'm not doing it just because, oh, what a chore. Oh, I have to get up another Wednesday and I have to do another posting. It's I do it with so much joy. I mean, look at the attention to the picture that's posted, the verbiage that's posted. There's an event that is posted. How much, it, how much joy do I get from the fact that I'm posting about the Facebook Live? Q&A and waiting for all of you to join and talk, right? Kelly, go ahead, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I wanted to give her an example. Thank you. I, I agree with Poonam that you need to give yourself more credit, Patricia. You are dedicating a significant amount of time and energy to understand the why. Why you're here, why you feel the things that you do, why you don't wanna feel certain things and why things fit or don't fit. The why is, is the key to everything. The why teaches us when we look into it, why we feel certain ways. And when we understand why we feel a certain way when we're actually serving ourselves. And, and Kelly said it wonderfully, when we bring our joy of self into the world everybody benefits and you don't have to explain anything to anybody because that joy that you carry in your heart that dedication to yourself to the mystery of why you are here that dedication to yourself ripples outward all the time this is the beauty of being human when we embody that choice when we are present with ourselves and embody our understanding of our why why we are here why I want, why do I feel so passionately about discovering my spiritual path? That in and of itself is such a rare thing these days. I mean, yeah, we have these large groups and on Facebook and, and other things, but you know, for the majority of the population of the planet, this is not a very common consideration. And the simple fact that you are questioning your reality and why you are here and what it is that will make you joyful and what it is that will serve your soul path the most. That is huge. You have a very unique mind and heart and soul to be on this path and be present in this moment right now with us. That is it to hear it. Right. I my my mind is finding a million excuses why you know it's like no 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 it's like this now nah, blah 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 but you are an amazing human being and you need to own that. You need to accept that your incredible uniqueness and your joy and your curiosity of discovering your spiritual path is beautifully unique. And for all intents and purposes is your spiritual purpose. And that you carry that and that you are so fiercely devoted to yourself. To discovering this is such a beautiful thing. So it is in a sense, a way that I'm serving myself. Yes. And my word for this year you weren't, you guys weren't here, Kelly and Kelly, but we had like Facebook live a little, like I think two weeks ago, a little talk about new year and stuff. And last year I had two words, which was playfulness and prosperity, which I guess a little bit. And mm -hmm. this year I didn't like my word because when I was meditated, it showed up and it's like what <laughs> and that's patience uh, so i was uh. asking <laughs> Puna, I was like what do you think and she was talking about embracing femininity because it's a feminine energy word but yeah so any thoughts on that if that's in any shape or form could be added to the purpose maybe mm -hmm. the way you find out your fierce devotion to yourself and your path can make you feel impatient sometimes. 
because you want to know. You like it burns. It burns in your bones. And it's in your blood. It is it's such a fierce feeling in your heart and your soul that it causes you to feel impatient. Because you 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 know, you can feel the answers. You can feel, you know, the other side of the veil. You know that there's so much more. You do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking all these questions and you wouldn't be here right now. And sometimes patience is just acknowledging the, that simple fact that you are so fiercely devoted to yourself in truth for very authentic and genuine reasons, learning to be present with yourself, learning to be in the present moment, that your ego mind is actually trying to trick you, that you're not actually achieving something. So it makes you impatient, makes you even more fierce to go after it except you are already growing. You are already discovering yourself. You are already knowing those answers. Except because you know there's more. There's always more. There's always more refinement. The universe is like, well, that was page two. <laughs> and I guess you want to get, the, get to page seven this time? <laughs> I know. And I think this is the egos trying to put me back when I was that I'm not enough, that I'm not doing enough, that I'm not doing yes. it right and i need more answers so i'm signing up for more courses to find out which and you know there's nothing wrong doing courses and exploring i i spent decades doing that there's nothing wrong with that at all this is this is you wanting to understand what fits for you which is a beautiful thing and you have to give yourself the credit as pranam says you have to Look at all of the hard work you've done. This is the gift you've given yourself. Panam's absolutely right. Your path does speak volumes. Yeah, but I think Punam, if I can say that, uh, when she asked me, it's like, oh my, I was like, oh my God, you signed up for that. It's like, what got to me, because, you know, you do it. Yeah, I know you did Punam with, goodness of your heart is like because you know i didn't need to and seeing that i still fell for it in a sense it's almost in that moment it got me it's like oh my god you know mm -hmm. so in other words i'm i'm not i don't have my purpose so i can't sell anything so i can't my whole ego started yeah. you know to yeah. kick and scream in that moment except you could tell that your ego was kicking and screaming. You knew. Yeah. You could step back into observation and you saw. So you gave yourself that gift of seeing and knowing and experiencing that space so that you could learn with more clarity the patterns and behaviors of your ego so that you can then step back into more observation and more clarity and disassemble and step more into your power and claim more of who you are through that learning experience. The simple fact that you can articulate what you just did, that you could feel your ego kicking and screaming is not a common thing. And that's something to be proud of that that has you know that takes a lot of work that takes a lot of courage to be able to go inside and be present with yourself and to observe your ego kicking and screaming and know what's going on and oftentimes that is exactly what we need and so we give ourselves those kinds of experiences beautiful thank you so much kelly always incredible I'm the so reason blessed. So, and, so blessed and I just want to thank you for Kelly and Kelly. It's like for coming today. I mean, that was incredible. And thank you, Caesar, too, for your wisdom and Punam. Oh my gosh. I again I, I came here, it's like, oh my god, I'm I'm late and I didn't even know it's gonna be about me. <laughs> right. yeah. The reason, the reason, and I wanted to clarify something, Pat, Patricia, the reason why I said something about what you paid for the course, just imagine Dean Graziosi in his uh, mindset, 
why is a person taking less money? Let's say it was $600. Why is he offering something for 425, right? And adding on another course that he had already published He's just repackaging, you know, it almost is like re, uh, remastering, like you're watching uh, Star Wars and it's this remastered version remastered, of Star, yeah. uh, remastered version. He, why is he repackaging his old course and selling it for less money? That means January, he needed to kick in revenue. First quarter one, you are in marketing, right? He needed to kick in rent. Why is a person taking loss? on his, you, you could be paying $600 for the whole year, right? Instead of that, you're just paying in January 425. Why is the person doing that? It's just capitalism. He is trying to gain revenue for quarter one. That's what he's trying to do. Well, I mean, just think, why is the person giving it for less, right? And understand the strategy that he's trying to, and then he's, he's, he's going to get you to feel the fear. Oh, nobody's gonna come save you. The world is crashing. The cryptocurrency is going to uh, this thing. The financial markets are gonna crash. The housing market is gonna crash. You can't rely on anything. We've been doing this for the past three, four years of pandemic, 2008. I mean, things have crashed and we've survived, right? No matter what crash, no matter what came, no matter what happened, last year you didn't have a job for a few months, you were still able to find a job, right? So things happen, their lows, their highs, and we eventually, the universe always is working in our favor. The universe is always there to, to take care of us. Just remember that. And as Kelly said, joy, find your joy, find what gives you, it gives me joy every time I post something, it gives me joy when I do the group meditations, I've done it for free for since 2019, it gives me really joy, I mean, it gives me real joy to see you all every week, right, so find that inspiration, what inspires you, how does consciousness, and this is what I was telling you on Friday, how does consciousness want to flow through you and go out into the world? I mean, when we do the workshops, it's, I mean, ask Kelly and Kelly how much effort I put in into the workshop, in publishing the workshop and in getting everybody together, get their stuff, coordinate, post, write emails. How much effort is it? But the vehicle is prepared. In that, I would say, technically, I know how to use email. I know how to use technology. I'm vehicle is prepared but there is a lot of joy in it. And I love that weekend that we do the workshop. I absolutely love all the session leaders. I absolutely, I mean, it's an honor and a privilege, just like it's an honor and a privilege to have all of you. So I know it's getting late for all of you on the East Coast. So I'll wrap it up on this. Thank you so much, Kelly and Kelly for joining after such a long time. Thank you, I'm very grateful for today. Thank you yes. so much. Eternally Thank grateful. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for choosing your divinity over your humanity, as Nadia says. Many blessings. Much love. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Bye.